Scrivener is the first app created by Literature and Latte in 2006 by Keith Blount. When Blount couldn't find his ideal writing software, he decided to make it himself. In 2004, he taught himself how to code on Mac, and in two years, Scrivener was born. Scrivener is designed to be the end-all be-all of writing software, a software that integrates composition, outlining, and research. That's not all. It goes above and beyond the original concept, especially when you consider the price. If Scrivener would only allowed you to write, outline, and keep track of your research, it would still be a great tool. The best thing about Scrivener is Literature and Latte want to hear from their users and how to improve Scrivener. You can go over to their form and suggest features, and they will reply, possibly even to let you know the feature already exists. Yes, it's that pack. This does not mean they will integrate your idea into a future update. Literature and Latte have a clear vision for Scrivener, and some ideas just don't fit. This is how their second app, Scapple, came about. This is not bad. It keeps Scrivener from being overcrowded. The interface for Scrivener is unbelievable, especially since 3.0 was released. You can see this by a side-by-side -side comparison. To be an end-all be-all of writing software, you better have some features. Scrivener not only does, it over delivers. There's so much it could take hours to go through them all. I'll highlight the best features to save time, but you're going to want to strap in. This is going to take a while. Opening Scrivener, you are met with a menu giving you the option to learn about the program through different tutorials as well as a list of templates for different projects. When you select one, the next thing to create is a saved document. That's right, you save before you even get started. This way the autosave is always on from the start. Once you saved, you open up to the main window. The quick layout is the binders on the left, toolbar up on top, the inspector on the right, and the editor is in the middle. The binder is your organization. Depending on the template that you have selected will determine what are the default folders. For fiction, you have manuscript, characters, place, front matters, notes, research, and templates. You can customize all the folders and add more. Even change the icons from a pre-made list and even make your own. You can import articles or drag and drop them anywhere in the binder. Have a website that you know you will need to review constantly? Well, just drag and drop it in. Bam! You have the page in your research folder. Now you don't need to go on the web and take a chance that you might get distracted. The toolbar above is completely customizable. When open, it'll bring up a list of icons for all the features you can put here. It is very easy to pack it full, so it's best to place only the features you'll use regularly. The three recommended tools for your toolbar are the following. Distraction free. It clears everything out so you can focus on the writing. The typewriter. This will keep the cursor at the top of the screen. In distraction free mode, this is automatically turned on. The microphone. This will read back what is currently in the editor or whatever you have highlighted. This is great for when you're not sure about something you wrote as well as for editing. Welcome to the new world. It is full of danger and violence. It is only where the strong and clever survive. While I highly recommend these features, you need to set the toolbar up for what will work for you. On to the inspector. Here there are several things you can do, such as notes, metadata, keywords, and snapshot, and a few other things. I'll go over what I have used. Under notes, you can put a synopsis for the page as well as notes. This will come back under the corkboard. Let's move on. The best feature is the snapshot feature. Once you finish a chapter, a scene, or whatever you wrote, click the snapshot and it will be saved. When you come back to edit, you can use the snapshot feature to see the difference between your different drafts. You can even revert back to a previous version, all without having to start a new section. This is awesome. As for the editor, well, it's where you're going to do your writing. Enough said. Let's move on. Let's talk outline. The outline feature is very good. You can see different information for all the pages and even move them around. Though the best version of this is the corkboard. For every page in the inspector, it will appear as a note card on the corkboard. That synopsis you wrote on their notes will appear on the note card. No longer do you need to worry about the cat or dog running through and messing up your carefully laid out note cards. It's all digital. You can move them around to find the best order. This is rigid and will lock them into a stiff order. Don't like that? Go free mode. Here you can move them around like they're real cards. The best new feature that came with 3.0 is the color code board. This is awesome for helping you to track different arcs from characters to story. I just started using this and it's so useful. If you've yet to give the card a color, you can drag it into the color you want, or you can click the card and select it that way. Let's move to compile. The feature I never expected to find in a writing software is the compile feature. 
When you're ready to print off your novel or export it to submit to your agent or editor, this feature will help you export it into the format you need. While it's great not to have to look up different formats, the compiler is not my favorite. It was changed from 2.0, which was easier to use, especially when it came to a custom layout. It's not hard, it just feels like there's more steps and it's located in different spots. To change the project title, you have to compile the entire project so it will save. The feature is great, but it needs to be simplified. In my opinion, go back to 2.0. There is so much more I could go over, but here are a few other cool features. Target goals. You can set up a word count goal for your project as well as the day of your writing. If you set a deadline, this will break down how many words you need to write each day to achieve the project goal by the deadline. In 3.0, writing history was added. This keeps track of all the words you wrote each day. Now all that is needed is a stopwatch so you know how many words you wrote in a session, not just in a day. The last feature I'll mention is the name generator. Having trouble coming up with a name for a character? Well, Scriven will do it for you. When you're going to spend a lot of time using a piece of software, it better look good. A white blank screen with a blinking cursor is bad enough. Thankfully, Scrivener is beautiful. The change between 2.0 and 3.0 is great. Scrivener has a fresh look that is not distracting, but if you do find it so, just click the distraction-free button and it all disappears. Scrivener packs so many features into its software that it comes with a steep learning curve. If you just want to write, you can open Scrivener up and do that very easily. To learn how to use everything in Scrivener, just hop on over to Literature and Latte's website. They have several detailed tutorials that are easy to follow. Scrivener has been around for a while, so YouTube is packed full of tutorials. These are hit or miss, and it all depends on the narration of the person. Thankfully, Literature and Latte's narration is great and not annoying. One last bit, no longer is Scrivener locked to the computer. They have launched their mobile app for all Apple products. Sorry Android users, there's not one out there, yet. It's been all building to this. For what we get in Scrivener, the price has to be high. But it's not. You can purchase Scrivener for $49 or $41.65 if you're an education or student. Windows is $45 and $38.25 for education. This is a fantastic price. The software could easily be far higher and still be worth spending money. Not sure if you want to spend the money? Literature and Latte offer a 30-day free trial with everything unlocked. No limitations. Scrivener is a great piece of writing software. If you want somewhere to keep all your work in one convenient location, it is for you. There's a reason why so many writers recommend it. All the features for the price is amazing. This does lead to a steep learning curve that can be a little daunting. But the tutorials Literature and Latte puts out help greatly. Scrivener is not going to be for every writer, and there's nothing wrong if it's not for you. With a 30-day free trial, it is worth giving it a try to see for yourself. My grade for Scrivener is a solid 8. It is marvelous. Let me know down in the comment section what you thought of my review, and if you'll give Scrivener a try. Please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps support the channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and turn on all notifications so you know when all other software reviews and content go live. Thank you for watching.